Okay friends, let's talk beans. Remember, populations who eat beans are the longest lived populations in the world. Learning to incorporate beans every day in what you eat is going to set you up for a lot of health, far easier weight loss, really healthy gut health and function, and just getting a whole bunch of really great phytonutrients from a really easy tiny little source. Now, if you are overwhelmed at the thought of even having to do this, you can buy those low sodium canned beans. But when you realize the versatility and the different unique delicious flavors that you can get out of cooking them at home, plus the texture is way better when you make them on your own, and it opens the door for really yummy bean dips and good delicious hummus. You can even make brownies from black beans. Sounds crazy, but actually it's delicious. <laughs> you don't have to believe me now. You'll try it and you will love it. Anyway, opening the door to these possibilities, it's really important that you learn how to first cook beans. So, cooking beans starts the night before. You wanna get your dried beans, four cups worth. You're gonna put them in a big bowl and cover them with water. I'm gonna show you that right now. Step one, the night before. Good morning. We are now ready to go and get our beans cooking. Um, I provided three different options for you. You can cook your beans in um, a pot on the stove. You can cook them in a slow cooker. Um, I love cooking them in my Instant Pot because I can just set it and forget it and come back to it when I'm ready. It also cooks them really fast. All right, let's get started. Okay, first things first, you gotta get your hair up out of the way because you know we don't want hair in our food. Okay, I'm gonna drain the water off of my beans just down into the sink. And then just put it in my pot. And then I like to use a spicy V8. Um, you can use any kind of V8. I find that spicy just makes it taste really good. It doesn't really taste spicy, it just tastes good. And I use the entire bottle of V8. Then I put some chili powder, about a tablespoon, and some ground cumin, same thing, about a tablespoon. Oh, this is a new one. And then I take one of my veggie bouillon cubes. Crumble that up. And then I have my fresh cilantro. I just grab, I don't know, about half a bunch off and I just rip it up. Stems and all. You don't really have to be too picky. I'm going for easy and delicious for you. Then I want to just give that a good stir and get everything incorporated. And you are gonna salt your beans when you're done. And the reason why is it can make your beans take longer to cook if you salt them first. Um, and it's a good way to make sure you're not getting too much sodium in. So, close it, seal it, make sure it's on seal. And then, I do it on manual, on high pressure for 50 minutes. And I can just leave it alone. Once it's finished cooking, it will just keep it on warm until I'm ready to come back for it. Okay, this is my recipe for quinoa. Um, I just have this old school hand-me-down rice cooker that gets the job done, so I haven't wanted to buy a new one. Um, I just blended some um, red and regular quinoa together because I think it looks pretty. So I have two cups of quinoa, four cups of water, and then again with my little veggie bouillon because you want your quinoa to taste like something. You don't want it to taste like nothing or it's not going to be very good. Let's flavor it up a bit. And to jazz it up even more, I add a little bit of this McCormick Himalayan sea salt blend. Just 
just, I don't know, a teaspoon or so. Give it a good stir. And you're good to go. If you don't have a rice cooker, you can definitely cook this on the stove top. You'll bring it to a boil and then bring it to a simmer for about 20 minutes. Test it to see if the water's all been absorbed and then fluff it up and then you'll store it for eating for the week. All right, this is my favorite go-to sauce recipe. I put it on everything. Here in Utah, there is a famous restaurant called Cafe Rio and this is not gonna taste exactly like the Cafe Rio dressing, but it gives you the Cafe Rio dressing vibe. It's fresh, it's Tex-Mexy, it's got a nice zip of cilantro and lime in it, and I use it to dip my fries in and my onion rings. I put it on my power bowls and my wraps, um, even in my breakfast burritos in the morning that I make with um, my smoked tofu. I use it every single week. I've been eating it probably for about three years straight now since I developed it and I'm not sick of it yet. <laughs> so if this isn't your style, the Tex-Mexy style, um, I sent a link with a bunch of other sauce options, but you will need some good sauces that you love to include um, on the meals you make just to give them that extra oomph and make them taste delicious to you. All right, so let's jump in. This is my Veganaise reduced fat mayo to about a cup. And these are tomatillos, so you just peel the outside off and I just stick them in whole. This is where a high speed blender is really worth the investment. I probably use my blender at least two times a day, five times more. I put about a half a teaspoon of dill and a tablespoon of parsley. But if you don't love dill, you can, or parsley, you can, you know, mess around with your amounts until you find an amount that works for you or use an herb that you really like. I put either a small clove or a half of clove of garlic. And then I just put another half a bunch of cilantro right in. Let's give it a fresh squeeze of lime, probably about one to two tablespoons, depending on your taste. Now, I like my sauce kind of a little bit runny, so I can just pour it on things. If you want it thicker for dipping, you don't need to add the water. Just kind of to your preference, fourth a cup to a half a cup. And then we're gonna blend it. I do it on the whole fruit blending. to either a squeeze bottle or just a container for dipping and it will stay good in your fridge for two weeks but I'm pretty sure it will be gone before then. 